Greetings to you, it will be a fashion guide. Here I will try to explain to you in simple language what this mod is. It may seem complicated to you, but it's not. I must say right away, this is a technical mod and it adds its own unique rotational energy, with which you can create amazing mechanisms or make a fully automated factory. In this video we will talk about generation, about the unusual energy from this mod and about the basic mechanisms that will help you at the start of your development with this mod. And before the start of this video, I want to say thank you to dear subscribers who leave comments and motivate me to continue shooting the same guides. Thank you. K adds only two new types of ore, these are zinc ore and zinc bearing deep shale. And you can get them with a pickaxe starts iron and higher. And some decorative blocks, viridium, azurine, cremzite, limestone, ochrum, ash and dark ash. You can find the last two blocks in hell, and the rest in the ordinary world. Those mechanisms from the Ket fashion, as I said, work on the energy of rotation and almost every mechanism has an entry point where you can bring it. And the easiest way to get this rotational energy is to use a creative motor, it is only in the creative. And you need to connect it with this rotating side, which we will do now. Let's connect it to this mechanism from the back. Now he's working and starts slowly pushing us away if we stand in front of him. If you hover over the rear edge of the motor, you will see these are the numbers that you can change, thereby slowing down or accelerating your mechanisms by rotating the wheel. And the shift plus the rotation of the wheel will allow you to change the value one by one. You can also change these digital values to negative ones, thereby the motor will rotate in the opposite direction, changing the very principle of the mechanism. In the beginning, the mechanism repelled us, and now it will suck. This principle also works with other mechanisms. And in a normal game, you will use wind, burning of something combustible or the energy of moving water to get the energy of rotation. That's where we'll start in this video. Our goal is to make a water wheel, but first we need to study the following crafts. The first craft is an andesite alloy. It is made from pieces of iron and a few andesite. And exactly the same similar recipe only from pieces of zinc. Therefore, it is more profitable to collect zinc than iron in order to save it. Next, we need to learn how to make shafts, they are made from two pieces of a fantasitic alloy. And from the shafts, you can make an ordinary gear by adding a board to the shaft or a large gear, it has two recipes, adding two boards to the shaft or adding one board to the small gear. And our water wheel is made of a large gear and eight plates of some kind. I dug a special hole, let's install our wheel. I must say right away, this wheel is installed only vertically. I am currently wearing special glasses from this mod, which show in units how efficiently our wheel rotates. Fill it with water and it already starts to rotate and the efficiency is 96 units. Now I will put some blocks and show you how the direction of water affects the speed of rotation of the water wheel. We have slightly changed the design and already the rotation speed is 256 units. The water flow should start from the top and go under the wheel, thereby you will reach the maximum available rotation speed. And by the way, friends, there is already a video on my channel about life hacks with a water wheel, how to make it work more efficiently. The link will be in the description and in the tips, I advise you to look. And little tips. A water wheel in standing water will not produce rotational energy because there is nothing to move there. Increasing the total number of water wheels will not increase the maximum speed. Also, if the flows are opposite, you can accidentally destroy it by dividing it into parts. And now let's look at ways to transfer rotational energy. But before that, we have to learn how to make a mechanical belt. It is made from six dried kelp. The first method of energy transfer is, respectively, with the help of gears, connecting them sequentially, small with small, small with large, or, respectively, large with large. An interesting fact is that large gears can be connected in perpendicular planes to each other. And at the end we will put our fan, thereby you can transfer energy like this. Gears can be placed in different planes by pressing the shift button. And also if you put one gear on another, you have a place where you can install it for more convenient placement of gears. Also, by connecting the same gears, they will not change the speed of rotation, and from a large gear to a small one, it will accelerate, and if vice versa, it will slow down. Also, 
the rotational energy can be transmitted using shafts, simply extending them thereby and connecting the mechanism. At the same time, it will work exactly the same way. You can remove parts of the shaft by replacing them with gears, thereby you can make a variety of connection schemes for your mechanisms. There is also a convenient and fast way to install shafts. Aim at the last shaft and press the right mouse button and you will have it continue in that direction. And another way to transfer energy is by means of a mechanical belt or conveyor. Here is an example, we also have a water wheel and a mechanism, but they stand at some distance. Let's connect them without gears. We extend our shaft and then we will put one shaft here. Then we take a mechanical belt in our hands, right click on the end of the first shaft and we have a red indication. It shows that it is impossible to connect with these blocks, but if we hover over another shaft, it will turn green. Right click and we have two shafts connected by a conveyor belt. A little more joining. You can only connect in a straight line, diagonally it will not work. And you can only connect in the same planes, that's not possible, but this option is quite possible. Objects that fall on the envelope tape become part of it and will move along it. You can pick them up by right clicking on them. Vertical envelope tapes cannot pick up items. You can make envelope tapes at an angle, objects can already move along them. You can also add additional shafts to the conveyor belt, thereby you can connect more new mechanisms. This also works with inclined tapes. Also, if you hold a mechanical belt in your hands and click on the last part of the conveyor, you can extend it. Next, we need to learn how to make andesite hulls. They look unusual, their texture connects. They have two purposes, they are often used in crafts and are needed for the decoration of shafts. The shaft in the housing will also transmit rotation, but it will just look more pleasant. Housings are very easy to make from any wood. To begin with, you need to cut it, then take an andesite ingot by hand and right click on the cut block, and the case turns out. This can also be automated using the K-Mod, but I'll tell you about this mechanism a little later. Next, we will learn how to use sandpaper. Sandpaper or sandpaper is needed in order to eventually produce polished rose quartz. This process can also be automated, but we will do it with handles. And first we need to make rose quartz, this is his recipe in one of two sandpapers, ordinary sandpaper, this is her recipe for paper and sand or red sandpaper. Now watch how the polishing takes place. We take rose quartz or sandpaper, no difference, and put it in the other hand. In the second hand, you should have the opposite object, respectively. And press the right mouse button, just hold it. As a result, part of the strength of our sandpaper was spent and as a result we got polished rose quartz, which will be useful to us in crafting. And useful facts, sandpaper can be repaired with another sandpaper. You can also enchant with repair and durability. Next, we will talk with you about the mechanical press with which we will make plates. But before that, we must learn how to make the following items, such as a depot and a bowl. Our depot is made of an indesite alloy and an indesite body, and the bowl is made like a boiler, only from indesite alloys. The depot is needed in order to place items on it. They can be either reset or set with a right mouse click. Items can be placed in the depot with the help of other mechanisms and it also successfully interacts with mechanisms from the Krita. And this bowl, it looks very much like a cauldron, but it has a different purpose. It is mainly used in other mechanisms, including a mechanical press, and is able to store objects for itself. They can be supplied from above or using other mechanisms. The bowl is capable of spitting out objects that were produced in it through a special hole. It appears when there is a block of the Crete mod next to it. And the bowl can also spit out objects on the conveyor. And yet, the bowl has a layer for the recipe filter so that you can specify what kind of craft it will produce. And now let's talk specifically about the mechanical press. Visually, it looks like this and you can power it from this side, or, accordingly, from this one. The press has conditionally two modes of operation. The first involves direct pressing of the object, and the second requires the presence of a bowl, which I have already told you about. The press should stand one block higher than the object that you will press and just throw it out on the depot, 
or on some block. As for me, it is more convenient to work with the depot. Also, this mechanism can press items that go along the conveyor belt to organize continuous production. And in the second mode, everything is much simpler. We put a bowl under the press and into it we shove the resources that will be processed. And, in fact, this is how crafting happens here. The next mechanism is called a millstone. Orally, here is his recipe. You'll need gears, an andesite casing, and some kind of block of stone. This mechanism can turn some objects into others, but I would not call it a full-fledged crusher, because it cannot crush ores and make a double output of resources. The millstone can be powered in two ways. The first one is through the entrance, which is from below. And the second, more interesting way of washing down fat. Please note that this part looks like a gear, respectively, with the help of ordinary gears you can power it, both small and large. And actually, how our millstone works. You can't just put objects in it, they need to be dropped exclusively into this hole and fed from other sides using a mechanism. During the crushing process, you will notice small particles, they show that the mechanism is working. To pick up the resource that was produced, right-click and you will get the result, in our case it is flint. And the next important item is called a fan. To create it, you will need a shaft, an indesite body and a propeller. It is done as follows, you will need four sheets of iron and an andesite alloy. The fan is powered only from behind and now we are feeding it a positive rotation speed. With a positive speed, he can repel objects and players, well, still living entities. The higher the speed, the better. Oh, the greater the efficiency. This also works in the opposite direction. This is not all, the mechanism is capable of more. Before the fan is running, it emits particles. If you put water, fire or lava in the path of these particles, then you can handle some items. For example, now we have received flint from gravel. Yes, instead of a fire, you can put a burning bonfire and it will give the same effect. And in the new versions of the crate, it is now possible to install a fire shower or a fire shower in front of the fan, thereby giving us access to new crafts. I strongly recommend that you install a mod that shows all the crafts, because with a fan you will have access to a huge number of recipes that can be useful to you. For example, I have already made a farm on my channel that makes gold out of sand and this can be realized just with the help of a fan. And also about the fan, there is a small improvement for it. This improvement is called a nozzle. You will need four andesite alloys and some wool. The nozzle dissipates the fan action in different directions, and in this case we have a negative speed and creepers are attracted. But unfortunately, with the nozzle, you will not be able to handle items as we could do without it. And now we're going to talk to you about the wrench. And actually here is his recipe. You will need a stick, a small gear and three gold leaves. With the right mouse click, you can rotate the mechanisms from the Cree mod, and by holding the shift plus the right mouse button, you can dismantle them immediately into the inventory. You can also use the key to configure some mechanisms in detail, but I will tell you more about this when I talk about them. Next, we'll talk to you about engineering glasses. They are needed in order to get additional information about the mechanisms from the Crete mod, if you hover over some devices. And you can make these glasses with the help of threads, a gold leaf and two glasses. And now we will talk about the mechanisms that will simplify your life at an early stage of development. Now I will tell you about two types of gearboxes. This is the most common gearbox and it has four inputs from each of the faces and the same four inputs can be outputs, that is, you can power three mechanisms at once. And make it more compact than gears. And the gearbox has two recipes. For the first, you will need an indesite case and four gears, and for the second, you will need another gearbox, a vertical one. And then we have a vertical gearbox, it also has four inputs, two of which are located vertically. And to see it better, I decided to put it a little higher. That is, you can transmit rotation already in vertical planes, which will also simplify the construction of complex mechanisms. And the vertical gearbox is made from a conventional gearbox. The next mechanism is called the clutch. It has only two inputs, but it can work with a wristone signal. To make it clearer, let's sum up the rotation from one side and put a large gear over the opposite one. And if you give a redstone signal, then on the opposite side of the rotation becomes. 
In this way, you will be able to turn off or disable various chains of your mechanisms. To create you will need an indesite case of rest and dust one shaft. Next we have a reversible mechanism. It also has two inputs and it also interacts with redstone. The reversing mechanism is able to change the direction of rotation to the opposite ones when a restun signal is connected to it, which sometimes helps a lot. To create it, you will need an andesite case, a gear and restown dust. Next we have a chain drive in the housing. It also has two inputs and let's bring the rotation to it. The real potential of this mechanism is revealed when there are a large number of them. When they stand side by side, they evenly transmit rotation to each other, thereby you can power a large number of mechanisms. If you click on the chain drive with a wrench, you can rotate it 90 degrees, thereby it will already transmit rotation vertically. An interesting fact is that the chain drives that are in the upper row do not connect to the lower ones. But if you do the following fraud, turn one of the drives as follows and put the same one on top, then you will power the second row. And this mechanism is made of an andesite case and three pieces of iron. And we still have an adjustable chain mechanism that can also work from a restun and it also has two inputs. And please put on engineering glasses, it will be easier to explain. Without a restun, this mechanism behaves like a chain drive in the housing, evenly distributing the rotation speed between the other drives. But if the adjustable drive is the source, that is, it is powered, and not other chain drives, and a signal is arrested to it, it doubles the speed of the following mechanisms after it, that is, here we have 64, and here 128. And in the following it will be exactly the same. And if this drive is not a source and a Rostov signal is applied to it, then specifically its speed will be reduced by half compared to the rest in the row. And finally, friends, we will talk with you about the correct connection of mechanisms, how to avoid problems. Our source allows us to connect mechanisms for a total load of 256 units. Let's take the mechanisms and put them to the chain drive in a row and we have an overload. Why is that? It's very simple, friends. One of our drills produces a load of 64. 64 times 4 of our drills, we get 256. 256 equals 256, so we can connect. That's too much for the fifth. Either make a more powerful source, or change the speed on these mechanisms, slowing them down, thereby using other connection methods. Or just make an additional source and connect as many consumers as you need. And the last thing I'll tell you, if you forgot how to work this or that mechanism, then in the Crete itself, if you hover over some item from this mod and click W, then a special menu with a graphical interface will open for you, where he will tell you in detail how everything works and how everything works it works. And then Durka was with you, thanks for watching, bye.